Our gospel reading for today comes to us from the third chapter of St. John. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, that, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you that unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. That if I had told you earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? that no one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Indeed, grace and peace be unto you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That I love, I just love to listen in to the conversations of Jesus. You never know where they're going to go. <laughs> you never know how they're going to turn out. And the fact is, is that they always seem to be just kind of their own separate, unique thing. <laughs> that Jesus knows exactly what this person needs to hear. He knows exactly where they need to be led. He knows the very things that are there, but they never know. <laughs> As one commentator once says, it seems that Jesus is simply incapable of giving a straightforward answer. And I'm pretty sure that is the case. Is that I don't know if you've ever had those kinds of conversations where you kind of walk in, you think that you know the way that it's going, you know how it's going to turn out, and when you walk away, you just are simply like, what happened there? (laughs) You wander away a little confused, a little bewildered, befuddled, trying to wonder what happened. You zig, they seem to zag. You wanted to turn the conversation this way, they went way over that way. Is that you leave kind of confused of what in the world happened. That if you've ever had one of those conversations, Nicodemus can relate. (laughs) That he found himself thinking that he had come in, that wasn't I pretty complimentary? I thought I was pretty pleasant. I thought things were pretty nice. I thought the conversation started off as well as it could. So what happened? Where did I offend him? See, Nicodemus found himself coming to Jesus, and I don't know if you caught it, but Jesus rather abruptly (laughs) simply cuts him off, tramples over what he says, and indeed just begins to lead Nicodemus in a different way. That Nicodemus comes and simply wants to go ahead and speak, but Jesus isn't interested in hearing what he has to say. See, the fact about this situation is that I love that Nicodemus, in his pride, didn't just stomp on off. 
The Nicodemus didn't just kind of fume and huff, but indeed he instead began to wonder what in the world is going on here. What do I need to hear? That maybe you and I, within our own relationships, our own conversations, or indeed in our own relationship with God, need to be asking that question deeper of what is God really trying to say to me here? Because Nicodemus thought that he had said it all right. And yet, now what do we see? We get a completely opposite and a completely different kind of situation. Here comes Nicodemus, not just some schmo off the street, but here is a man who is not only a Pharisee, a man who loved God's Word and loved the church and loved everything about what was going on there. Is that if there was a worship service, he was there. If there was a devotion to be read, he had it. (laughs) The fact is, is that this was a man who loved God's Word. And yet he is also a man who is a ruler of the people. A man who found himself having all the right background, having all the right credentials, having dignity and honor and everything else. Nicodemus was the kind of guy that when he walked past you on the street, moms would turn to their kids and say, you should be more like that guy. And yet, what does Jesus begin this conversation with? Nicodemus starts, we know that you have come from God. And Jesus just responds, you need to be born from above. (laughs) What? Nicodemus comes saying complimentary things about Jesus. And instead, he in turn gets this very fact that you need to change, Nicodemus. You need to be born from above And the fact is, is that that term can be used in slightly different ways. It can be interpreted born from above or born again. We know how Nicodemus thinks. He thinks, can a man enter his mother's womb a second time and be born again? That's the wrong thought process here. But what do we see? We see Nicodemus challenged again and again. That Jesus repeats himself, you need to be born again. Again, that I love that the scriptures here go ahead and put into context what is being said. But there's something here that you probably may not notice. is a word that you've probably heard before, but it's translated here. Jesus again and again says, truly, truly, I say to you. Now, really what he puts there is he says, amen, amen, I say to you. Now, where do you normally hear that kind of word? Is that we usually, in the midst of prayer, we hear that word, amen, where? At the end of that prayer. Or maybe you're there in church and you're listening to a really, really good sermon and all of a sudden you just feel the need to go ahead and Actually, I'm in the wrong church to go ahead and probably say that one. Is that usually sometimes you have those churches that speak an amen, either in the midst or at the end of that sermon. What does that word amen even mean? You guys probably have used it countless times in your life, but what does it mean? It means let it be so, let it be true. That it is that affirmation that we are putting when we hear a prayer or when we hear a sermon or when we hear something that is good and right and fitting, we say amen as a way to go ahead and say, let this be true. It gains my affirmation or my credential. But what does Jesus do? Where does Jesus put his amen? Well, his amen is because he says it twice. That he doesn't put it at the end where we are comfortable, nor does he put it at the end where everyone else of his Judaic culture would put it. Jesus puts it at the start, at the beginning, before he even starts talking, before he even begins to speak. What does that mean? Why does he do that? That Jesus takes away Nicodemus' right to go ahead and decide, is this something that I want to hear or not? Is this something that is true or not? 
that whether he believes it or whether he agrees with it or whether he's willing to receive it, this word is going to be true whether Nicodemus is ready to admit it or not. Now, what is Jesus saying? Nicodemus You need to stop talking, stop analyzing, stop thinking that you are the one in control. You need to be born from above. You need to be born a second time. Is that stop approaching God as if you are the one who is in control. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Go back to the start and begin again as many times as it takes for you to realize the very source of your strength. Now, where do we maybe need to go back to turn again and again? Because Jesus speaks to us in this very same word. See, Nicodemus comes that he is just obsessed. Obsessed of what man can or cannot do. That Nicodemus in four sentences includes every single one a can in the midst of things. That how can this be? Can he? Is that no one can. Nicodemus is obsessed with human ability, with human capability, with human action and reaction. That Nicodemus comes thinking that somehow he can be in control and with enough human effort, with enough gumption, with enough place and practice and work that somehow he can find his way. But God reminds him that that's not how the Spirit works. You need to be born again, Nicodemus. But why is Jesus getting so much in Nicodemus' face? Is it why is it that Jesus, in the midst of this sermon, gets in our face? Because I don't know if you caught it or not. In the midst of our reading, is that Jesus all of a sudden got a little bit of a southern twang there in the middle. You maybe didn't notice, because in our English, is that we don't always catch it. See, in verse 7, what do we hear from Jesus? He says, do not marvel that I said to you, y'all must be born again. See, up north here, we have just one word for you. It's you. Singular, plural, all of that. Now, down south, they have two, right? (laughs) Y'all means all y'all, right? (laughs) So what does it mean that Jesus all of a sudden changes from me and you, Nicodemus, to do not be surprised and marvel that y'all need to be born again? Jesus wasn't just talking to this man. He was talking to every single one of us. You need to be born again. Do not think that somehow you have some sort of standing, some sort of place, some sort of level there with God. Is that Nicodemus, if you would have asked him, he would have gladly gone ahead and shown you all of his merit badges of those things. Is that this is that one for becoming a Pharisee of Pharisees. This is when I joined the Sanhedrin. This is this and this is that. He could go ahead and tell you all the way from synagogue school on up. All of those prestigious realities that he had true. He had all the right credentials. So what does it mean? that Jesus to this very aristocratic, Harvard-educated, wait a minute, it's not that old, um, rich, aristocratic, powerful, dignified, honored man that Jesus says to him, you must be born again. What does that say for the rest of us as well? But what does Jesus begin to speak 
that flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. That you may hear the wind, but you do not know where it goes from or where it is going, for that is what it means to be born of the spirit. What does that mean? (laughs) That I just came out of a Bible study finishing just a few weeks ago where we did a study on help. The help is here, is that as we thought about the Holy Spirit by Max Lucado, And in that, he shares a little bit of his own personal history that I just loved this very story. He said, when I was a boy growing up, is that all the way in high school, is that I grew up in West Texas where there is nothing but a lot of wind. (laughs) And he said, there in my senior high school days is that a young entrepreneur decided to take advantage of that wind. And on that city lake of our town is that he went ahead and he put in a number of small sailboats about the size of surfboards. Now he says there's one thing that West Texas produces a lot of, a lot of wind, not a lot of sailors. (laughs) And so me and my buddy James got in the boat and we enjoyed for that first seconds as we cast off from the shore is that we enjoyed some moments of absolute bliss and enjoyment until we stopped dead in the water right there, quite a distance from the shore. And he said, we didn't know how to untie the sail. We didn't know how to lift it or raise it, how to direct it or anything else. And so we did the only thing that we knew how to do. We got in the water and got behind the boat and started kicking our way back to the shore. (laughs) But isn't that the very image the way that humanity can be, that God has breathed into us and blessed us and gifted us, desired to pour into us that gift of the Spirit who works on our behalf, but we are still going by our own power, by our own strength. Like Nicodemus, we keep asking, what can I do? And what does Jesus want Nicodemus to hear? He needs Nicodemus to despair of himself so that he could be the very first one who hears those words that we absolutely love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. God does not just love a few of us. God does not just love a couple of us. That God loves all (laughs) y'all. Is that he gives to you that very gift of a spirit at work in your life. A spirit who comes indeed to breathe that gift, that power, that strength that you do not need to keep kicking and fighting and working. No, you can rest in his peace, in his promise, in his forgiveness, that we can live not simply in the midst of this life trying to find out what can we do, but what has he done. That God gave his son upon that very cross so that we could be forgiven, that we could be loved and changed, and that we can be those who are made his own. So may he grant to you this day and every day that very peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Amen. And so please pray with me. That Heavenly Father, you have made us of your own, that you have given us that new birth that comes from the gift of your Holy Spirit, and we ask that you would transform our lives by your grace, helping us to be honest in our confession of our need for you and to be bold in our trust in your promises. This we pray in that holy name of Jesus. Amen.